Day 93 Notes, Advanced Algebra 2. This week we continue our discussion with functions and how we can represent them in different ways. We're going to first start uh, with a, a function and we're going to look at it from its mapping diagram here. Now I know that this is a function because each input has exactly one output associated with it. Each input has exactly one arrow drawn from it here. That's another way of looking at a, a mapping diagram and determining that it does represent a function. In addition to showing a function with the mapping diagram, we can actually create points from this mapping diagram as well. That's what we're going to do next. Um, this negative 1, since it, since it associates with negative 5, and we often think of inputs as our x value and y outputs as our y value, we can now create points and plot them on a graph. So I'm going to uh, quickly sketch my units in place here. And we can place this point here at negative 1, negative 5. We can then plot the next point at 0, 1, so over 0 and up 1, at 1, negative 1, and then again at 2, negative 5, so over 2 and down 5. And the question becomes, uh, does this also represent a a, a function and, and we can say yes to that too because in, e in any of these input values remember here's our x-axis so this x-axis number line represents our input values or or our domain and so for this particular input value we have exactly one output value its range value is associated down here for this input value of zero we have the single output value and for this input value, we have a single output value. And lastly, down here, this input has one output. So wholeheartedly, I think we would, uh, we would definitely agree that this is indeed a function. Let's take a look at the next function here, written in function notation. Now I've taken the time to graph this function using our uh, TI Inspire calculator and this is the image that's presented to us. Do you recognize anything about these points? Well these points are the exact same points that we established by looking at our mapping diagram. Those points also displayed themselves here in our graph and you'll notice that since we used function notation, not only do we have these points plotted on the graph, but we also have every single point in between plotted on the graph. So this function is what we would call a continuous function because we have uh, more and more points than are, what than are what are just shown here at our plotted values. We have all of the infinite points in between shown and that's why we've connected them with a line. Clearly again since we used function notation and it appears that every input has exactly one output this is indeed a function. And if you think back to last week our introduction to the vertical line test this particular graph would pass the vertical line test. If I drew a series of vertical lines throughout the domain of this function, none of these vertical lines would ever touch the graph more than once. Since that's true, since all of these vertical lines touch the graph exactly one time, we are dealing with a function. So let's consider something slightly different. Uh, look closely at this equation and think about it for a second. Does this look like an equation of a function to you? Keep in mind that x generally represents our input values and y generally represents our output values. Have we seen any notation yet that shows output 
that's uh, that's a value that's not written by itself, that's not solved um, by itself? The answer is no. We generally have an output in an equation uh, all by itself. We would want to leave any math or any calculations that are necessary to be on the side of the equation with the input value. That way we can start with an input value, apply some sort of mathematics to it, and then return or output a number for that function or relation. So since we have an equation that says y squared equals x, and we know that y is our output and x is our input, we should definitely solve for y. And then we're going to go a step further. We're going to plot and use these test points, 0, 1, 4, and 9, as input values. So let's come over here and solve for y. The math isn't too hard. All that we need to do is get y by itself. And the way we can do that is to square root both sides of the equation. The only thing to keep in mind is that if I introduce this square root symbol, if I take the square root of a number where the square root symbol wasn't already indicated, then I must include both a positive and negative sign in front of my result. So positive and negative square root of x. I don't know what the square root of x is right now, so I have to leave this as it is. So now I'd like to create a series of test points. So I will uh, make a chart here for x and y, and I'm going to use the x values as we indicated up here. x is going to be 0 and 1 and 4 and 9. So the thing to consider at this point is, is kind of interesting. Um, when I input the value of 0 in place of x, don't forget that this symbol it tells us to complete this work twice. Not only do I need the positive square root of x, but I also need a negative version of the square root of x. So when I input the value 0, my result is going to be 0, both positive and negative. When I input the value of 1, my output must be both positive and negative 1. When I input the value of 4, I get an output of positive and negative 2. And when I input the value of 9, I get both the positive and negative 3. Another way of looking at this is 0 maps to 0, 1 maps to 1, but 1 also maps to negative 1. 4 maps to 2, 4 maps to negative 2, 9 maps to 3, 9 maps to negative 3. So the question you have to ask yourself is, does this represent a function? Does this table represent what a function should look like? Think about that for just a moment. I'm going to move forward to graph or plot these points. I have a value at 0, 0. I have one at 1, 1. I have one at 1 and negative 1. I have a point at 4, 2. And I also have a point at 4, negative 2. I've got a point at 9, 3. Now 9 is just off the page here, and 3 would be right here. And I also have a point at 9, negative 3. That would be down here. If I were to connect those points with a line, I'm allowed to do this because I started with a, an equation up here, and, and I could technically pick values in between 0, 1, and 4, and 9, and plot those points. I just didn't pick them this time. They weren't going to be nice calculations for me to see. So I can connect these with a line, and I have a function that looks like this or I, sh I should say a relation that looks like this. And you'll notice that I'm using the word relation now because is this a function? Um, if we think back to the way the table's designed, absolutely not. No, this is not a function because each input does not have one output. And we'll say does not have exactly 
one output. Okay, that's the definition. We should have exactly one output. To mimic that, if I look at the graph and consider the vertical line test, well, right here is a vertical line that, that crosses this picture, this graph, more than one time. So that line alone is enough to prove, using the vertical line test, that this is not a function. There are other vertical lines that we could draw that help support our argument. Any one of them shows that a vertical line would cross the graph of this uh, relation more than once. Interesting enough, too, if I draw a vertical line out here, it doesn't touch the graph at all. And since it doesn't touch the graph at all, that's also an indicator that this function does not pass the vertical line test. Each vertical line should cross the graph exactly one time. There are a couple interesting questions that I'd like to discuss on the Practice B worksheet from section 1.6 and I've copied the information from it. Uh, now you don't have to copy this into your notes, I just had to do so in order to, to talk about it in the video here. Um, the question uh, number one is talking about the average high temperatures for a particular city and we have the months June, July, August, and September and the degrees in Fahrenheit 82, 88, 93, and 82. Uh, the question becomes, uh, what is the domain and what is the range of this information? That's the first part. And then we have to determine whether each relation is a function or whether this relation is a function. Um, first off, let's talk about the domain. The domain is our input values. So which value, which set of values are we inputting as this function here? or inputting into this relation and generally speaking our input comes on the left hand side so for our domain we'll say something like this that the month or the months are our domain values if we input the month June into a function we should output its high temperature so the range or the output is the temperature Now, is this a function or not? Question you must ask yourself is, does each input have exactly one output? And if it helps, you can draw your arrows so that this looks more like a mapping diagram. And if we look closely here, June points to one object, July points to one object, August and September each point to one object. So if each input has exactly one output, does this represent a function? The answer is yes. Number four is the next question I'd like to take a look at. Um, the question become here. Or the question here becomes: uh, Use the vertical line test to determine whether each relation is a function. If not, identify two points a vertical line would pass through. Now, if we're looking at this, um, this particular function or this graph would pass the vertical line test if we drew our vertical line out here on the left hand side. This vertical line crosses through the graph only one time. However, if I drew a vertical line here, that's the location or that's a location where this would fail the vertical line test. So because it's failed the VLT, it's failed the VLT, uh, therefore it's not a function. Uh, two points at that location. Um, I'm actually going to look at the points established here uh, where this line, this part of the line fails. It's a little bit easier to see the points on the uh, graph this way. This first point is at 0, 3. This next point is at 0, 0. And if we looked at the point below it, part of that vertical line, that point appears to be at zero, negative three point five, and there's a good um, there's a good representation of our our mistake as well. Each of these inputs or this input zero has three different output values: three, zero, and negative three point five. 
So if I was presented with a set of data that looked like this, uh, right away I can see that these inputs, or this input in particular, has more than one output. And that's a good description as to why this is not a function. And the last one that I want to talk about in this video is the uh, question number seven. We again have to decide whether each relation is a function. So if I'm looking at number seven and I'm thinking about the relationship between the model of car to ID number, um, if you're familiar with cars, every car has what we call the VIN, VIN number, vehicle identification number. We would like to know if the model of car, when it's related to a list of ID numbers, if that's going to be a function or a relation. And let's just say we pick um, the model of car Mustang, right? Ford just released an update to the Ford Mustang in the year uh, 2015. So think of all the Mustang models that are being sold and then consider their identification number. Um, if it's 1J, um, let's see, I, v, VIN numbers or VIN numbers have about 15 characters to them. I don't, I don't know any off the top of my head, so let's just make one up here. IJ1234Q7 uh, Q789. Let's just say that that's a VIN number for a particular model Mustang. Uh, do you think it's at all likely that this is the only output for a Mustang model vehicle in the year 2015? And the answer would be absolutely not to that. We could have one that's IJ1234R789. And this VIN number, this identification number, is different. And then immediately we would see that this input for uh, Mustang now has more than one output with these VIN numbers. And so that's enough information there to say that this is not a function. So I hope that helps, under, helps you understand um, some more about the relations of functions and relations and also our discussion on the vertical line test. I hope that clears some things up as well. If you have any questions, let me know in class tomorrow.